Good morning everyone and welcome to another video. In this episode we're going to be sending off our attack animations, making our AI attack and combo attack us. A quick shout out before we start to my Patreons, thank you guys an incredible amount for your continued support. I really do appreciate it more than you guys know. Okay, let's jump into this video. So this episode is a continuation of my previous AI tutorials, so be sure to check out those before you start this one. I'll leave a link in the description to the first episode. Okay, let's jump into our behavior tree. Before we start adding anything, I want to tweak a few settings. These settings are completely up to you guys for your own project, but I'm just going to put our player range to 300, so our AI isn't as close to our character. Then I'm going to open our get wander location task, and I'm going to change our forward vector to times 30 instead of times 50, just to stop the AI moving as close to the character. Okay, cool, back into the behavior tree. When our player is strafing around the player, we want to give him a random timing to attack the player. So let's start by creating another selector coming off our first selector. Call this strafe or attack. Then attach our wandering sequence onto this. To switch between strafing and attacking, we need a bool variable to decide this. So into our blackboard, new variable, bool, and call this attacking. Back into the behavior tree, let's add this onto our wandering sequence. So right click, add decorator, blackboard. Select it, and in the details, let's call this attack ready. Then let's change the variable to our attacking variable we just made. Change observer abort to both, then set key query to is not set or is false. Now let's duplicate our sequence. Plug it in coming off the right side of our selector and rename this to attacking. Then let's change our attack ready to is set. So when our attacking ball is true, we attack. When it's false, we strafe around. Cool, now let's create a task to randomly generate an attack. So into your content browser, duplicate your get player location task. Call this attack player counter. Double click to open it up, then delete everything except the start and finish nodes and the blackboard ref. So we want our attacks to happen randomly. So let's bring in a random int in range node. Min should be at zero, but the max value is up to you. The higher the max value, the lower the chance your character will switch to attacking. I'm just gonna set this to two as I want the character to swap between attacking and strafing quite regularly. So off this, let's bring in a equals node and put equals to one. Hold B and click to bring in a branch and connect these up. By putting the number two as max on the random int node, the integer is either gonna be zero, one, or two, giving my AI a 33% chance to swap to attacking if it lands on a one, and a 66% chance to continue strafing if it lands on a zero or a two. Off our blackboard ref, bring in a set blackboard value as bool node, and set this to true. Then duplicate these nodes below it and set the new one to false. Now connect everything up with the branch true going into our blackboard true and the branch false going into our blackboard false. So we're generating a random number. If it's one, we're gonna set our attacking to true. If it's zero or two, we're gonna continue strafing. Back into our behavior tree, let's bring in this task. So right click, attack player counter. Set the variable in the details to our attacking variable we made and attach it up to our strafing sequence. Then control W to duplicate it and attach our copy to our attacking sequence. Now both our sequences have a chance to swap our AI over to the other sequence. So now we need an attack. But before we do this, I'm just gonna duplicate our set movement speed task over to our attacking sequence and then set the movement speed in the details to zero. This means when we're about to attack, we want to remove our AI's movement speed. Cool, now let's create our attack player task. Into the content browser, duplicate our gets blind location task, call this attack player, and double click to open it up. Delete the spline ref, location, blackboard ref, and the set blackboard nodes. Pull off your AI reference, mine's called NPC, and call your attack event. If you're using the same project as me, our event is called attack player. 
Remember, this attack event is just an event in our AI blueprint which calls an attack animation. For anyone who doesn't have this, feel free to implement your own attack event. But if you want the same one as me, we made this in our character attack tutorial. So I'll leave a link in the description to that video. Now connect everything together. Back into our behavior tree, let's call this task. So right click, attack player, and connect it into our attack sequence. And lastly, for our attack sequence, we're gonna lower our cooldown down to 0.5 seconds. For our character to combo attack, he needs to attack more than once a second, meaning if we have a one second delay, this won't happen. All right guys, let me give you a really quick full rundown of what we've done today. When our AI gets close to our character, he will run the strafe sequence, which will move him around the player before rolling a dice on whether to send the AI to attacking mode. If our random integer between 0 and 2 lands on a 1, which is a 33% chance, we will send our AI into attacking mode. If it lands on a 0 or a 2, a 66% chance, we will continue strafing. So our AI will keep strafing until our random integer lands on a 1. This will tell the AI to start following the attack sequence. Our attack sequence will send off an attack before rolling the dice again on whether to swap back to strafing. Now we have a 66% chance to swap back to strafing and a 33% chance to continue attacking. And that is it guys. Remember, the way you swap your AI from attacking and strafing is completely up to you. I quite liked the random technique that we covered today, but you can do it whatever way you like. All you need to do is pick your own method of updating our attacking ball. Change it to true and our AI will attack. Change it to false and he'll go to strafing. And that is everything guys, in the next episode we're going to cover actually damaging our AI. So if you'd like to see that episode this very second, be sure to check out my Patreon to unlock that early access. So thank you so much for watching guys, I will see you in the next episode. Peace!